We'll often be around beaten runs since we came back from the winter break at Lokomotiv Leipzig. In the Bundesliga we find ourselves in that 7th position that we did grab last season which would mean Conference League football for us again here next season. But it's going to be tough to try and stay there today as either side of transfer deadline day we take on RB Leipzig and good old Ange. And off the back of that, Wolfsburg. <laughs> Welcome to episode 79 of the Leipzig Loco with Lokomotiv Leipzig here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and coming up today we take on RB Leipzig away from home, albeit at a venue that we do play at quite a bit these days in European football in the Red Bull Arena off the back of transfer deadline day and also a home clash against Hanover. We also travel to take on third place Wolfsburg, so looking forward to those two games in the Bundesliga coming up in today's episode. Then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated, but off back yesterday's episode, which was a cup game against Union Berlin, plus that win over Fortuna Dusseldorf in the Bundesliga. If you missed that one, I'll leave a link to it. Over in the top right corner, we've just played one more game. It was away from home, and we took on a Mainz team are pretty much smack bang mid table at that point. But could quite a few quick backups since we have come back from the winter break. We did rotate quite a bit for this game, and thankfully, some of those rotation players did get the job done for us here. First up, it was Krasnick who opened the scoring their nice drive into that top left corner around the 25 minute mark, and then about 20 minutes into the second half. This time, it was Joshua Zerks who off a ball played in there from Benjamin Bushawari. So, lots of involvement there from our rotation players. A game that was quite even apart from the fact we had. A lot more shots on target, quite efficient in front of goal in this game. And we pick up a 2-0 win, which obviously, because you heard it in the intro, does mean we are unbeaten since we came back from the winter break. And we are now in 7th, albeit it is just because of goal differential. Freiburg are also joint on points with us, but thankfully they have a minus 5 goal differential. We are now on plus 1, so thankfully we are in a conference league qualifying spot. Only 1 point behind RB Leipzig though, and it's quite condensed all the way between Wolfsburg and down to the likes of mine. So a big win there against one of our fellow contenders for European football to come the end of this season. And hopefully we can pick up some good results during the course of today's episode as well. First up in the derby against RB Leipzig. But before then, a quick transfer update coming towards the end of the window during yesterday's episode. Obviously coming into that one, we did sell Tom Gale and Luca Campanelli, but got them back on loan for conference league purposes, we had some spare money and put in a bid for a good young left winger. And thankfully, that left winger did join us, not sweet left foot, but the other one who was out of Spain once we find him here. It was Tunde Musa, £1.5 million overall. It did end up being £1 million up front, as you can see, valued a lot higher than that. Now that he has joined the club, that looks like a good purchase in a couple of years' time. He should be homegrown nation and at club currently. In the under 19, should get a bit more game time down there with the likes of Unhello and also Bushuari. In the first team, it is a bit better than Bushuari, but I think we might promote him to the first team come the start of it next season. But that's all we've done so far in this transfer window. We've also got rid of a couple of youngsters whose contracts were expiring. Some bids came in from some teams. I decided we'd get them off the wage budget nice and early, but nothing else of note has happened in this transfer window off the back of yesterday's episode. And hopefully, we can get a good result here. In our second derby of the season earlier on, RB Leipzig handed us a bit of a lesson at home, it's fair to say. As you can see, our form against them off the back of that first game we played against them last season in the Cup has not been very good. We lost 3-2 earlier this season, to be fair. We did come back late in that game, but a poor start. We went 3-0 down at home. It was always going to be tough off the back of that, but hopefully we can pick up a result here and at a venue we've been doing a pretty good job at so far. In the Conference League, albeit as you can see, they're not doing a bad job themselves. They come to this one in some really good form, including a Champions League win over Atletico Madrid. And also, unlike the last time we played them, it does look like now that Dean Martin, the new striker, has been bedded in to that RB Leipzig team. So it's going to be a tough one first up in today's episode. But hopefully, finally, I can get one over Ange yet again, and we can go above them on the Bundesliga table and potentially a couple of other teams as you can see, Freiburg also take on Eintracht Frankfurt. So a couple of big games on this match day, which could impact 
the teams who aren't in and around that European hunt. But a win here would be quite useful indeed, getting into a nice European spot nice and early in the second half of the season, especially if we kick back into competitions like the DFB Pockle and, of course, the knockouts of the Conference League. We have still got quite a few tired players heading into this game, and obviously as well that injury to Escobar, he's still out for a little while. We've kept our wingbacks from yesterday's episode, that cup game, they've been in pretty good form, going better than both Sicker and Ryan, so they stay there. Also, Alte is our right-sided centre-back for this game, have decided might not be the worst idea to give Hitao a rest on a heavy workload. Also, obviously, Benedetti is in there as the deep-lying playmaker with no Escobar, and also Krasniki off the back of a good last game does start on that right wing but apart from that it is the best 11 that we've been using for most of the season hopefully those wing backs can continue some good form and we can pick up a good result here at the Red Bull Arena as I said a venue we've been doing a pretty good job at in European football hopefully that means we won't be too overawed by it like we might have been in this game last season and there's our team is ran through before it does look like RB Leipzig are quite strong and do have Dean Martin up front. Of course, we took him on earlier this season. They had only just signed him. They did not decide to play him in that 3 2 win that they did pick up. Hopefully, he doesn't come back here and prove to be quite an improvement. But he does look a very good striker. Does the former Nottingham Forest man. But we get underway here at the Red Bull Arena in the second and potentially last Leipzig derby of the season. I think RB Leipzig are already out of the DFB pocket, but an early highlight here, we have the ball inside the box, and someone's been brought down there by Fratis, he didn't actually catch who that was, but this would be an excellent start for us to try and put one away from the penalty spot, it is a penalty, and I think it might be Alban Krasnicki with a chance here to open the scoring, of course, can be a bit streaky from the penalty spot, but he sends the goalkeeper the wrong way, buries that one top right corner, his seventh goal of the season, having got one in that previous game, that 2 0 win over Fortuna Dusseldorf, and that might be the start we need to pick up a win in this derby away from home. Hopefully, silence the crowd a little bit, and it's a good start for us there, albeit helped out by it being a penalty. We take an early 1 0 lead and good work from us there to win that ball, and we get it out to Anhalo in a bit of space down that left hand side. Starts to cut inside, tries to hit that one top right corner with his right foot, but unfortunately that one sails over the bar, but it's fair to say this has been a pretty good start from us here away from home in the Leipzig derby. Hopefully we can keep this up for the remainder of this first half. Albeit RB Leipzig heavily put up shots overall in this game, just that one shot on target, which was from the penalty and spot. Now RB Leipzig do look to be getting on the front foot just a little bit more, but it is hard to tell from that XG match story considering we got that penalty very early on now, it is a yellow card there too. Krasnicki will get him to ease off tackles. Maybe he'll be coming off for Mastis at halftime. He's still only recommended for 45 minutes, which is why Krasnicki is staying this game. A corner there for RB Leipzig, unfortunately for them. We do clear it away, but they do still have the ball on the edge of the box. Quillo there with a shot. That one just clips the crossbar. So thankfully, that's the best chance they've had so far. It just misses the target. And we might get into the sheds here with a 1-0 lead. Indeed we do, and hopefully, chance for us here to now jump above RB Leipzig on that Bundesliga table. Krasnicki's on a yellow card, so I think we're going to take him off. And also Anhalo on a 6.5, so we might freshen up the wings for the second half. We'll bring on Mustis as well as Bushuari still on the bench, as I said, with Moosley going in to the under-19s. But that was a pretty good first half in terms of scoreline, albeit RB Leipzig do look like they have been on the front foot during that first half. Hopefully we can grab another goal in this one and that would hopefully put this game to bed and we can make up that home defeat earlier on this season. As we get the second half underway, we'll just make sure too that Mastis is not easing off tackles. We got to do that at halftime with that change in place of the goal scorer and Albin Krasnicki. But so far, not a lot happening here in the early stages of the second half, albeit as I say that, there is a couple of shots on target there for RB Leipzig. Now Daniel Cueto on a yellow card and also Blomay down to a red heart. So we'll bring on Racine Bullock in place of Blomay and also Jordan Xerxy for Cueto. I think that might be a good idea off the back of that goal in the previous game. And as well as that, just looking at Kalvotchen, he's down to a bit of a deep yellow heart. But I think we'll save up that last sub just in case we need it with an injury late in this game. But we are back underway here. Only 25 minutes left and we still have a 1-0 lead. And there is a throw in here in our favour. Xerxes is on the ball and inside the final third. Plays that one over 
looking for Marstees at there, hits the bum of Espen Dollar. So thankfully, we actually get that ball back and a chance for us here yet again to build from the back. Bit of a loose pass there. It's very helter skelter, and Espen Dollar does get back on the ball. That was a good chance for us there to win that back. And now Martin is on the ball. Carvalho does get in behind. He's onside, and Fabio Carvalho, a player who was quite useful for us at Arsenal in the FMOE save earlier this year, he picks up a goal. Unfortunately, that intercept, we just didn't quite get on the end of, and also a bit of luck there for RB Leipzig off the back of the ball-hitting Espindola in the bum. You could say that was a bit of an arsey goal, and unfortunately, they do grab an equaliser. We just tried to get that interception in from there. We left a bit open. On that right-hand side, and off the back of that, we will make our last substitution. Botchin is down to a red heart, so has Benedetti. But obviously, no proper deep-lying playmaker option on the bench with Pinchard away on loan at Kaiser South. And so Sika can come on at right back and hopefully get us a winner in this game. Albeit, we have not really done anything so far in the second half. So it might be time for us now to chuck Mastis onto attack for these last 15 minutes and see if that helps out. That's something which has just helped a little bit in the past when we have been in search of a goal, but at the moment, not doing too much, albeit as I say that, we got a few shots off, but now RB Leipzig with a free kick, but thankfully that one goes too deep. Sicker can shield that one into the hands of a visit. You will pump this one deep, looking for Bushuari out on that left wing, but being a bit of a midget, he can't win the race to that ball in the air, but thankfully, Benedetti gets that ball before Nkunku does, albeit a loose touch there, and it does fall back to Christopher Nkunku. Now it goes back there to Kanate, and goal it is in this game, and they do look to build from the back here. Do RB Leipzig must east there trying to win the ball. They find some space down their left-hand side. Paolo just inside the box will square that one for Dean Martin. He might have popped up with a goal off the back of that. We might go attacking because I think he was onside, and we might have just blown this. In the second half, albeit to be fair, RB Leipzig have been outplaying us. It is a goal, and they make it 2-1, and we just are struggling at the moment to beat our crosstown rivals, and this would be a big defeat as well with the situation on the table. Good finish there from Martin. Unfortunately, Comedio and Cesar could not quite cover him. We'll just check if he was onside indeed from this highlight. He quite clearly was, unfortunately. I think our right back there in Sicker. Just kept them on side. Off the back of that, we're going to chuck our wing back and Sazer on attack and also get Bullock onto support as a ball wing midfielder and get inside the last couple of minutes of this game still on attack. We'll demand more and see if we can grab a late goal to get an equaliser in this one, but it's looking unlikely, unfortunately. Our biggest chance so far has come from that penalty and apart from that, haven't done a great deal. We'll just adjust some instructions here to hopefully get a little bit more going on in the last couple of minutes of this game. We might even actually distribute to the flanks or to the playmaker instead of our centre-backs and just see if that might help us get on the front foot a bit more and also go to a slightly higher defensive line instead of a standard one. It is here a corner in our favour. It looks like it might be, albeit the game does cut out as it sometimes does off the back of some tactical moves. We'll now go very attacking and hopefully that might do something. But in the end, we blow a 1-0 half-time lead and get beaten 2-1 by RB Leipzig, beef the overall flow of the game, apart from that penalty, we didn't really offer too much, it is fair to say, RB Leipzig well and truly were on the front foot, so they probably deserved that win, but a bit frustrating, having grabbed a 1-0 lead pretty early on in that game, but second half goals to Carvalho and to Martin, that first one did feel a little bit fortunate, but unfortunately, that was probably the one that got RB Leipzig on their way, and they pick up a 2-1 win, at the Red Bull Arena, we'll just go forward and see what that does to the table before we come back for the second game of today's episode, which is against Wolfsburg off the back of one against Hanover, which hopefully is a game that we can win. But as you can see, because of the results in those other games, Freiburg do just jump above us there with a draw against Eintracht Frankfurt. But now we slip down to eighth and are not in a European qualifying spot as we lose another derby, 2-1 to RB Leipzig. And we are back about to play our second game of it. Today's episode off the back of nothing happening on transfer deadline day. And also this clash with Hanover, unfortunately. Poor start here at home in the snow. We can see there just shy of 10 minutes and did go 1-0 down. But thankfully, just before half time, a double strike from Nicolo Amadori. This one somehow found its way into the mixer 
he headed that one home to get it back to one all, and then right before half time, down the other side it was Ryan, he takes his time here, does his man a little bit, and Amadori with that beautiful Italian head puts that one home to actually give us a 2-1 lead at half time, and nice and early on, in the second half, we did grab a cushion goal. This time, Daniel Cueto played in, and he buries that one in the bottom left corner. It did get interesting off the back of me, making a few subs with around 15 minutes left to try and keep some players fresh for this Wolfsburg clash. We did concede one here. Ryan gets outdone in the air by Udley, but thankfully, Nicolo Amadori, who we did leave on, did complete his hat-trick. Good work there from Krasnicki off of the bench. Cueto picks up another assist to go alongside with his goal as well. Amadori, with a bit of help from the inside of the post, does put that one home for a hat-trick. And in the end, we pick up a pretty comfortable 4-2 win, albeit did go down early, and they did make it 3-2 with a few minutes left. But thankfully, in the end, it was a good win and about what we did deserve from that game. So it does mean going to the second one of it today's episode. We are still in eighth, but certainly a win here could get us above Freiburg, depending on what happens in their game on this match day. They are away at Borussia Mönchengladbach, but it's not going to be easy for us as we do take on Wolfsburg, these guys, and third on the table. And their recent form in the Bundesliga isn't too bad as well if you do get rid of that result against Bayern Munich and also just ignore those results from the Champions League where it does look like they are struggling. They have been in Sandhausen and Hoffenheim in their last couple of games, so that does probably make them favourites. Going to this one, especially at home, but just a reminder of what happened the last time we took on Wolfsburg. We actually picked up a 1-0 win with a very late goal to Benjamin Bushuari. So hopefully we can do something similar here, but as I said, might be tougher away from home. Hopefully at least we can pick up some points and try and keep with them before a couple more winnable games come up to end the month of February against FC Cologne as well as Schalke. But we'll get stuck in to the second game of today's episode and hopefully put out a similar performance to that one that we just put out there against Hanover picking up that nice 4-2 win in between the games in today's episode having a look at the team sheet and the only changes from that first game of today's episode I think this currently might be our overall best 11 with the injuries that we do have at the club in particular that one to Escobar hopefully he is not too far away but Hitado comes back in in place of Alte as the right-sided center back and also we do have Mastis back on the right wing, so it does look, as I said, pretty close to our full strength 11 at the moment. I think I do prefer Votchen and Cesar as our wing backs. Hopefully, the volunteer fire alarm isn't proving too distracting in the background. Something must be going on here in the neighborhood. We'll give the boys a bit of a pump up here and hopefully put out a performance, as I said, quite similar to that one against Hanover. But this will be tough away from home against the good Wolfsburg team. Definitely players to keep an eye out on Sushich and when those guys have caused us problems in the past, but hopefully we can pick up a decent result here and keep ourselves at least within striking distance of those teams currently inside of the European qualifying spots. We're underway here so far. Wolfsburg do get the first shot off now, a free kick. He tries to put that top right corner. Does Jonas win, but there's a very good save there from Ivizic. That gets him up to a green rating and keeps it nil all, albeit now Ben Dope, the former Liverpool man, has just been there for a couple of weeks. He puts that one into the mixer for a corner, but thankfully looks like at the moment we are going to deal with this danger. Good work there from Pablo Cesar, albeit does give away a free kick. So Doak will get another chance, but thankfully that one doesn't get shown to us. Still nil all coming up towards the 15-minute mark. And as you can see, Wolfsburg are certainly on the front foot in this game. Five shots to one, but thankfully our one was on target. But it is a highlight here in favour of the home team. Sushich plays that one over. To Svanberg just turns there and actually gets a few players to seg off him. Now Veron surely was offside. It finds Jonas Wind who puts that one away. But I'm pretty sure Veron there was offside. Otherwise, that is a horrible goal to concede. But thankfully, he was offside. Did look pretty clear cut. It's not his 14th goal of the season. Jonas looking like his face might have been frozen by the wind. But Veron absolutely a country mile offside. Not sure if we actually needed to see that highlight. Blomé picks up a yellow card. So he might be coming off at halftime. I think today we might bring on Manuel in his place. Bullich at the moment is kind of our deep-lying playmaker backup. So it might be a good idea to leave him on the bench just in case. As Wolfsburg are on the attack, a block shot there from just outside the box. They put one here into the mixer. Jonas Wind, good save from Ivizic. And then Ben Doak, thankfully, that one comes off the post. A near open net. And we are clinging on here 
to a nil all score lines Van Berg there with a clever foul, but thankfully he picks up a yellow card and coming up to the half hour mark, we are well and truly on the back foot, but thankfully still in this one at nil all. And now Amadoli at the far post, Richards might have assisted him there instead of Ataro, and we are somehow 1 0 up in this game and are doing something pretty similar to what we did to RB Leipzig early in this one. Hopefully this time we can hang on and pick up at least a point. And it's a very good header there from Amadori, but Richards, the commentary says a good clearance. He put it straight into the path of our strikers. So not too sure about that, but thankfully we are 1 0 up a few minutes shy of halftime, albeit now down the other end at Emerson Royal does have the ball here just outside of the box, picks out Doak and some space. It goes into the mix of the air, but Svanberg with a header, thankfully. The woodwork yet again does come to our rescue, so it's fair to say Wolfsburg are unlucky not to have picked up a goal so far in this first half. And as I say, there is a corner here in their favour, and they eventually get one through Malitz. Jens only a second goal of the season. They were looking quite threatening in the air in some of those most recent highlights. And to be fair, don't think we can argue with that scoreline, much like that one against RB Leipzig, but this time Wolfsburg, they grab an equaliser in the first half. Camillo and Mustis there do get outjumped, and it might be one all going into halftime, which to be fair, would not be the worst scoreline for their statistical dominance here at home for Wolfsburg, but a late highlight here potentially in our favour. Daniel Cueto tries to slot through Anhelo, who was onside. That's a big chance there for our left winger, maybe. He should come off at halftime as well, albeit quite a few players out there are struggling in terms of ratings. Vot, Gen, Comedio. So maybe a few subs to be made here at halftime. Definitely going to take off Blomaye on that yellow card. But also I think Sika can come on and we might also bring on Ortea in place of Comedio with those 6.4 ratings. And as I said, we'll bring on Manuel in place of Blomaye. So three changes there at halftime and hopefully we can hold on here and pick up something from this game, albeit we've certainly been on the back foot, so might need to improve if that is to be the case. Wolfsburg might be a bit confident getting into the second half off the back of grabbing a late goal in the first half. The first highlight here is a throw in to them. Veron tries to square that one for Ben Doak. It goes out to Emerson Royale right on the edge of the box. Back in there to Doak, back to Royale. Puts this into the mixer. Thankfully, that highlight not up to much. Ivizic can claim that one, and hopefully, we can get down the other end and do something in this first highlight early on. In the second half, they put some pressure on us here, nice and high up the field. We eventually try and play that one out to Mastis. Probably could have looked for Sicker instead, but unfortunately, just went a bit too ambitious with that ball, albeit now Wolfsburg do give it away, and Anahlo has this one on that left-hand side, squares that one for Daniel Cueto. He just curves that one inside that near post, and somehow, yet again, we are back in front in this game, being well and truly outplayed. But thankfully, I think Benedetti won that ball back for us. In the midfield, Amadori plays that one to Anhalo. It's a good goal there from some of our attacking players. And as I said, Cueto just curves that one around the goalkeeper inside that near post. And we make it 2-1. And based on stats, Wolfsburg will be feeling pretty filthy about that. Now, Anhalo, who did set up that goal, is on a yellow card. We might play things safe here and take him off for Benjamin Bushuari, who so far has done a pretty decent job for us on that left-hand side this season. And we'll do that still with 40 minutes left. It does mean only one sub left for the remainder of this game. But hopefully we pick up no more injuries and we can make that based on performance or a red heart. But coming up here to about a half hour left, there is a throw into Wolfsburg. They look to play their way out from the back. As I said before, they'll be feeling pretty filthy about the scoreline considering they've had quite a few good chances. The woodwork has saved us on numerous occasions, but hopefully it can continue to, and we can pick up three big points here to maybe get ourselves back inside of that top seven. But fortunately, that tackle does fall to Veron, but thankfully his shot blazes over the crossbar. We are still up by two goals to one, but Wolfsburg now with a much higher XG than what we have, and we make our way inside the last 25 minutes Still with a 2-1 lead, hopefully we can cling on and pick up three big points. We'll be at now a free kick here, but thankfully Amadori does head that one away. They try and play that one out to Ben Doak, and it is here Pablo says a good marking on him, getting back outside the box, but now Zvanberg with a shot. That one also comes off the post. This time I think Ivizic might have got a touch on that, but they are certainly pressing for a second goal, and now Pablo Cesar will clear that corner off the line. We are really clinging on here 
to these three points. Hopefully we can hold on. But to be fair, not looking great. And we're going to just cheap player fitness. And Mikhail Mastis is down to a red hat. Alban Krasnicki in some pretty good form can come on for him for these last 18 or so minutes. And hopefully we can hang on here for free big. And to be fair, rather undeserved points in this game. But Wolfsburg have just had the worst luck in this game so far. Hopefully we can make the most of it. As it suggested there that Ben Doak, we should always press. Thankfully they should play a ball for there for Dutch Fafana and Ibizic can come out and claim that now. Hopefully he takes his time here and doesn't do anything stupid because Wolfsburg are pressing us quite high up the field. We pump that one deep, but unfortunately can't quite pick out Amadori and it finds its way back out to Ben Doak down that right-hand side. Bushuari gets a nice touch in, but unfortunately does fall to Emerson Royal now. Doak does make his way inside the box. He squares that one for Lukas Sosic and he puts it away, makes it to all to be fair. Can't argue too much with that. As I said, they've had quite a bit of bad luck in this game, especially off the woodwork, but that does make it to all and hopefully this doesn't go like that previous game did against RB Leipzig, but it's a good finish there from Susic. Good ball from Doak to set up that goal. He's been heavily involved in most of the good stuff that Wolfsburg have done in this game. And there is a highlight here immediately from the restart. Hopefully it is not one in favour of the opposition, but Bushuari, a couple of rough minutes for him. That pass goes straight into the path of a Wolfsburg player. We nearly win that one, but unfortunately can't quite sicker with a tackle somehow. Wolfsburg do keep the ball, but good work there from Queto. But then we try and play a ball through for Bushuari. This is very helter skelter. And now Sushic does get in behind. He's kind of one on one, but thankfully Manuel tracks back and can stop that one from making its way into the net as he chips the goalkeeper. will encourage off the back of that, and hopefully that might just slow things down a little bit. To be fair, a draw from this game, considering those stats certainly would not be the worst result, but we're still going to chuck Krasnicki on attack for these last couple of minutes and see if we can pinch three points from this game because that would definitely get us back inside of a top seven spot for now. But unfortunately, doesn't look like much is going to happen here in injury time. And to be fair, I think I'm going to take a point from that game. Much of the RB Leipzig one, we were the second best team but somehow found ourselves in front on two occasions. So I suppose a little bit frustrating. We could not hold on and pick up a win but still Wolfsburg well and truly the better team in that game. You can tell by the shots and shots on target and pretty much all the stats from that game that they completely bossed us. But somehow, thanks to those goals through both Nicolo Amadori and Daniel Cueto, either side of halftime, we do escape the air with a two all draw. So it's going to be a point which should put us above Freiburg for the moment anyway, back up into seventh four be it. We'll see what happens with their game in hand. But not a bad result there considering how that one went. We pick up a point away at third place Wolfsburg. So a couple of average results in those two games that we showed you guys on camera in today's episode. A loss there to RB Leipzig in the derby and then a draw with Wolfsburg, albeit in both of those games. We didn't play that well, thankfully. Did pick up a win over Hanover in between those games. Also got some youth improvements coming as well in terms of recruitment and facilities. Forgot to mention that before that Wolfsburg game. But as you can see... Not too much damage done there. Still only one point behind Freiburg. They drew with Gladbach, which is not a bad result considering that Gladbach are below them on the table and our goal differential is still better also now. Eintracht Frankfurt are in touching distance as well. So hopefully we can pick up some points in our next couple of games and might even find a way to make our way potentially into a Europa League spot over the course of the remainder of it this season. But I think they will do it for today's episode, two big games in the Bundesliga, where unfortunately didn't pick up that many points, but thankfully still in the hunt for European football yet again. For next season, if you enjoyed today's episode, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video, and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel, also consider hitting that subscribe button and turning that notification bell on as well. We'll come back for tomorrow's episode, the last one of the week, and I think it's time for us to get stuck back in to some cup and European football. We'll play Cologne and Schalke off camera. We'll come back and take on 1860 Munich in the DFB Pockel quarter final. That is the team these days of Jakuba Silway, our former striker here at Lokomotiv Leipzig, the striker who pretty much fired us 
and to the Bundesliga, but it should really be a game that we're winning against a team who are down in the free league. That's a very kind draw for us at that stage of the competition, considering some of the other teams left there, the likes of Wolfsburg, Gladbach, and Bayern Munich as well as FC Cologne. So that's a very good draw for us. Hopefully, we can make our way through to the semis for the first time off the back of that, and also a game in the Bundesliga where we take on Stuttgart. We'll come back and play the first leg of our round of 16 time, the Conference League. As I said a couple of days ago, that's a competition off the back of our league phase performance. We could go quite close to winning and might be the best chance for us to qualify for Europe yet again for next season. But we'll come back tomorrow and play those two kind of cup games in the DFB Pockel quarterfinal against 1860 Munich and also that first leg in the Conference League round of 16. Not too sure yet who that is going to be against. But until tomorrow for those two games, thank you very much for watching. Keep on keeping on. And I'll see you then. Cheers. Thought I could do this left through the sadness. Oh, oh, oh. Don't know how I ended up. I ended up to last. Oh, oh, oh. Sink through the deep and hurt and defeat.